interesting chat for you today, all about the power of protein. Are you prioritising protein? Really important, especially for midlife women. And we're going to be talking to a brilliant nutritionist. We've had her on the show before, Stephanie. Absolutely brilliant. Stephanie Moore, if you have got the current issue of the Lizar Wellbeing magazine, which is the strength issue, says here, start the year strong, then you may well have seen the brilliant feature that she's written. Actually, it's on page 45. That's where it starts. And it's called the P word, P being for protein. It's a really excellent, long, long article. We've got one, two, three, four, five pages here. And we are going to do a deep dive into that. So if you've got questions about protein, maybe you've been reading the 30-30-30 rule, which is 30 grams of protein three times a day on your plate. Yeah, why is it so important? Well, we shall discover in just a moment. Before we do that, I'm just going to reach across here and add Lainey as a moderator. So, yeah, I can see that you're there, Stephanie. I will be adding you in just one second. So Lainey is from my team and she will be hopping on here. So if you've got any comments or questions, can't see you, Lainey. OK, let me see if I can add Rachel instead. Uh, so where are we? No, can't see you either. OK, uh, what have we got here? Yeah, I've got you, Rachel. Let's add you. So, yeah, so basically, so Rachel's from my team. So if you've got any questions about podcasts, about Liz Love's offers, about the website, editorial features, then obviously Rachel will be able to hop on and answer. Nice to see you all. Thank you for all your hearts and waves. See you too. Thank you for your waves. Sending lots back. Who has got their copy of the magazine? Have you read this feature? I have to tell you, I've been doing quite a lot of research into protein, especially for midlife women, partly for my book, A Better Second Half, which comes out in April. So I hope you've pre-ordered that because I am super excited about it. And it probably is one of the easiest health hacks that we can do. We can add more protein into our diet, whether we're having things like protein shakes. We're going to talk about that. The best forms of protein, vegetable protein, is it as good as animal protein? What do the different types of protein do? Why are they so important? I have just, hi Lisa, you're watching me live for a change. Great, Nonnie has says yes, she's got her magazine. Stephanie, you haven't joined me just yet, so I'm just gonna click refresh on here, uh, just to make sure that you are, there we go, hopefully you are gonna join. Um, hi Rachel, yeah, nice to see you. So some of the things that I do, for example, is I'm a big fan of Strong Nutrients. You've heard me talk about this brand before. Brilliant female founder, Zana Morris. She wrote a great book called The High Fat Diet. She does a lot of resistance training, high intensity, short amounts of intensive exercise, particularly for building muscle. And we know that we lose muscle as we age. You may have heard the term sarcopenia, losing muscle mass. And that is such a factor when it comes to longevity. One of the key markers for living well as we age is the amount of skeletal muscle that we have. That's the muscle that's actually around our body as opposed to like heart muscle or the, the muscle that we can't control, which is like the little muscles that surround our veins and our arteries, for example. We don't have much influence over those, but skeletal muscle, we can affect, we can work it, we can build it. Lifting, moving, but actually moving with resistance. That's what's getting the muscles going. So yeah, you know, we all know that moving is important. Cardiovascular is important, good for aerobic health, circulation, pumping the blood, all of that. But actually having that resistance work, that load bearing, lifting stuff up, picking things up, whether it's weights, whether it's heavy shopping, whether it's our own body resistance, doing things like push-ups or squats, where we're simply using our own body weight. Really so important to help not only maintain, but to build muscle. And it's perfectly possible to build muscle as we age. And we're going to be hearing about why that is so important. I can see you, I think, on there now, Stephanie. So here we go. Let's see, hopefully that will work. Um, Dean, Dean McLean says, what's the best collagen? I buy Ingenious Beauty. So we've got a Liz Loves discount with them. They're the encapsulated collagen capsules. Probably got some right behind me actually. Um, something that I take every day. 
where's my collagen? I think I've got it my, my upstairs in the bathroom. But yeah, I take the capsules because they have got randomized controlled trials proving that the little tiny collagen peptides actually reach the small intestine intact, which is where they're then released and they can then circulate through the body. So I prefer the encapsulated collagen to powders and liquids and all of that, which get broken down into their amino acids. Not necessarily a bad thing, but it means they've then got to reform. And as we age, our ability to create collagen is reduced. So actually, I think if you want to give yourself a better chance for absorbing high quality collagen, then the encapsulated is the way to go. That's my opinion. Lorraine says it is very hard to build muscle. Yeah, but it takes a bit of time. You know, it takes time. Oh, my gosh, you say that you can't join, Stephanie. Let's try you again. OK, it may be that you need to come out of Instagram um, and try again. Sometimes it has a bit of a moment. So you just need to, to log out and log on again. Is this an engagement ring? No, this is not an engagement ring. I'm not engaged. I would tell you if I was engaged, but I'm not. I have no plan. Hello. <laughs> Good, you've just saved me from a lot of personal questions. So I'm very pleased to see you. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you too. I'm sorry, I don't know what was going on because nothing seemed to be talking to each other, but we're here. We are here. Yeah, and first of all, apart from saying Happy New Year, I have to thank you for the most brilliant feature that you've written. Thank you. You know, I, I love your knowledge. I love your expertise, your approach. And, you know, protein for midlife and older, women especially, I mean, important for every age and every, every demographic. But talk us through why you are such a fan of protein, particularly for us midlife females. Us midlife females need it more than ever, as does everybody, as you say. It's, it's kind of complicated and I'll try and keep it simple, but the basic sort of headline around that is that as we age, we absorb it less well. So our body utilizes it less well. So even if we were to maintain the same amount of protein throughout our lives, we would be getting less of it as we get older. And I think it's important to look into some of the details of what that's about, because it's to do with how we digest it, what our gut microbes are doing, how we are sending the right messages to, as to what to do with the protein that we eat. So it isn't straightforward X amount of protein, X amount of time of day, there are nuances, but the wide consensus is we need to be much more conscientious as we get older mm -hmm. because it's so easy to be deficient. Yeah. And also, as I say in the article, it's the one, one macronutrient, we've got carbohydrates, fats, and, and proteins, it's the one macronutrient that's sort of harder to just get enough of without thinking too much about it. We easily get our carbohydrates from fruits and vegetables and grains and all those things. Yeah, you're out and about, you can grab a sandwich, you grab, grab, grab a croissant or something, it, you know, it's a wrap, you know, you, it, it's all there, it's easy. But you know, I, I find too, and I prioritize protein, I know I'm gonna be out or I'm traveling. I have to think really hard, what can I take with me that's easy? Yeah, and that sort of transportable protein is less hard because often protein, will spoil in heat or, or get yeah. smelly or it's messy. So you can't just stick it in a bag and go and hope it stays fresh. So we have to be much more conscientious because it's harder to do. Mm. And if you've read the article, and by the way, big love, um, no, as I've said good. before, it's such a beautiful quality magazine, Thank not you. just the quality of content, but I like the feel and it doesn't smell and it's not all sticky and uh, the, the graphics, the photo <laughs> photography is always beautiful. Oh, um, as I put thing. it, as I put, yeah, as I put in the article, um, it's not, not just about the gross amount, the full amount of protein that we get every day. It's about timing and how we absorb it, as I said, and that there are key points in the day when our body uses it better. So we can dig into all those details. Definitely. Okay, so let's kick off then with maybe first mouthful of the day. Yeah. You know, my, my followers here, you know, people who follow me on, on Liz or Me will know that, you know, I'm always banging on about starting the day with protein and healthy fats. Ditch the carbs. Do not start the day with a piece of toast, a muffin, a bowl of cereal, a bowl of porridge even. I know that's controversial, but that's not for me, first thing. It has to be high quality protein. So it is eggs, yogurt, you know, Greek yogurt, higher in protein, um, healthy fats, maybe some cheese, maybe, I don't know, a bit of tuna. Mm -hmm. You know, those are the things that, that I go for. You talk about timing there. Is, is protein first thing important or does that not really matter? 
it's massively important. It's okay. definitely the most important time of day to have your protein. Really? Because it, it, it has been so clearly shown in the data now, it dictates what your body does for the rest of the day, as far as your appetite, as far wow. as your blood glucose regulation, as far as your growth hormones, your satisfaction signals, uh, your response to oh exercise. My gosh. I mean, it, it sort of um, sets a parameter for how the body feels safe and fed or unsafe and unfed. And so if you want to have, as we all do, sort of regulated hunger, no cravings, no energy crashes, a good sense of being full when you're full and a yeah. good sense of being hungry when you need to be hungry. Protein is by far the biggest manager of all of that. And so in having a good protein bolus, we call it, or a hit of protein as your first meal of the day, it changes your biochemistry on a metabolic level, as in what your body is doing energy wise, literally for the rest of the day in a way that as you listed all those carbohydrate rich classic breakfast foods everything the opposite yeah everything they've been shoving at us yeah Good old dr kellogg's yeah thank you i dr. mean kellogg's. really yeah. i mean so, so i'm just thinking here about my kids obviously my, my my children are home at the moment for for holidays back from uni and, and you know on on school break and all of that it's so easy for them they get up in the morning and they're raising the cover going where's the cereal you know where's the toast where's the croissant a bit of jam you know is it as important for everybody is it every age we should be saying guys listen to set yourself up for the day in all these ways for your brain your mental health your immune system everything you need to get a bit of protein in before you then go and attack the carbs if yeah. you do yeah because protein gives the system a nice bed onto which if you're going to have what we call the fast carbs, the toast and the jam and the honey, the cereals, there's a bed that the carbohydrate sits on so the carbohydrates don't absorb into the bloodstream as aggressively causing peaks and troughs of glucose and peaks and troughs of energy, both mental and yeah. physical energy get affected by the foods that go into our bloodstream of sugar. Um, when we're younger, we're more robust and more resilient. You know, we can handle those extremes better and right. we build muscle and maintain muscle more easily. So yeah. the imperative is less just because we're a bit more robust. So we do have to try harder as we get older. But I think there's something bigger going on here. I think if we can get the younger people, kids and teenagers and young, young adults into the habit now, even though they're yeah. sort of getting away with all the carbohydrate fluffy stuff for breakfast and there's no habit forming downside things. habit forming so yeah. to have the eggs or the good quality yogurt nice piece of cheese all of that and then if they still want something which they probably won't because the protein would have filled them up yeah. but if they do then the uh, long and short term implications of that are way 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 yeah. better so yeah so uh, what about <laughs> things like protein shakes because you know a lot of people might think Actually, you know, I don't, I don't, I haven't got time to faff about with yeah. eggs. Although what I do is I, I hard boil loads of eggs. Yeah, and too. Fridge, so that, you know, yeah. they're, they're ready. Grab and go. You know, snack yeah. food. Um, but you know, my my middle boy who's at uni, I I send him food parcels basically <laughs> of things like this, you nice. know, protein shakes, so that he can yeah. get up and just make something really easily and just have that as a baseline. And my younger one. I'll make him a protein shake just using, you know, full fat milk. I'll chuck in a bit of kefir so he doesn't notice it's there. Nice. Otherwise he complains. Maybe a banana, maybe a spoonful of almond butter or, you know, a few drops of vanilla extract nice. or something just to make it a bit sweeter. And he will drink that first thing. And, you know, I've always been concerned about am I doing the right thing as, as a parent to, you know, to be making him have that before he has anything else. So it's, it's very validating to hear that from you. Yeah, uh, there's a place for protein powder. And I confess I use a bone broth powder in the morning to get my my protein up because from oh, I think they could get such a thing. That's yeah, it's, really it's, interesting. it's wonderful. And quality is important as it is with with most food products but mm -hmm. especially when you're using an animal derivative you want the bones of that animal to be a healthy animal sure. and your audience probably know that bone broth is really healthy so to be drinking it and using it and cooking is lovely thanks for you the reminder get... I've, I've i've got some in my fridge actually and I, I need to get back onto it because it is so nutritious and you know as you say choosing an organic 
broth or making something that's come from you know regenerative farming rather than intensive agriculture makes such a difference doesn't it it really does and if you've had an animal walking around so weight bearing so we, as we know, is important for our own bones and muscles. Well, it is for animals, for healthy bones and muscles and eating mm -hmm. grass and sunshine on their back. Those nutrients are in the bones of the animals and that then gets leached into the broth with a proper slow cooking, wow. broth making method. And now, and it's yeah. relatively new to market, they dehydrate the bone broth. So it's a tasteless powder that you would use like any other bone broth. Um, oh sorry, my gosh, like any other I love that. Powder. Yeah, and the amino acid profile is phenomenal. And you've got yeah. all the gut healing and immune regulating properties. So it's, yeah. it is still a processed food. It's gone through a whole load of cooking, which is the process. And then it's, it's not dehydrated. It's ultra processed. Not you know, it's, processed. it's not got all the emulsifiers and nasties in it. I get yeah. to be traveling um, a little bit this year. And, you know, I'm really looking for things like that that I can take with me. Things that I can add in that are easy to yeah. use, transportable. Yeah. You know, I like stuff that's, quite tasteless you know I, I, I have an electrolyte drink in the morning and you know I like stuff that's unflavored and just doesn't have all the, all the rubbish added. yeah there's so much they add in unnecessarily and then people get hooked on the flavor and that's not what we should be going for yeah. and actually you make a yeah. good point there before as because we're talking about the first thing to eat in the morning but mm. absolutely you one has to hydrate before you eat anything so to get a I would say at least a pint and I encourage my clients to be having a pint plus of water with electrolytes in, first be it lemon or lime, a bit of salt, very first thing. The body Gosh, is so yeah, I thought I was doing well with two glasses, but that is not a pint. That well, Oh, you might be getting close. close. Yeah, and we can work up to it. I mean, if you're used to nothing or going straight to the coffee, that will feel wholly undoable. Yeah, yeah. Building um, so, up your so right. glass. Yeah. Um, but the point of the electrolytes is important that we mm -hmm. we don't absorb water very well if it's just plain water. We yeah. just pee it out. So you drink it and you yeah. pee, you drink it and you pee, which is lovely for your kidneys. This is the one that I use actually. I've just got it here. Um, the the, the, the nice. body bio. Oh yes, I like them. And that's, that, that, that's unflavoured. It's just literally potassium, sodium, magnesium. So I yeah, I've got, got one which is, of that. which is a bit zesty. It's got mm -hmm. some citric acid in, so it's got a bit of zest yeah. to it. Um, yeah. And I'm big into sweating and. You've got to remember when you're sweating, you're not just losing water, you're losing a lot of minerals. So you've got to get those back in through electrolytes. Yeah. But you don't have to get fancy. Just a, a little pinch of sea or rock salt, yes. squeeze of lemon or lime, you've got electrolytes in your water. You've got electrolytes. And that will hydrate. Because we lose so much fluid through the night, through our breath and through our skin. And our lymphatic system, which is our waste disposal system and our yep. blood system which delivers oxygen and nutrients around the body if we are even slightly dehydrated those systems are sort of thick and sludgy we've got to unsludge them we've got to hydrate them mm. so they get flowing better you're making me want to rush off and have a very large glass of electrolyte water right now. well i, I do <laughs> think it's addictive that. i think okay, so gets... moving on from breakfast sorry yes <laughs> yes yeah um, no, no, no i was just saying moving on from from breakfast uh i think you know if you do start the day with high protein you do tend to feel fuller for longer so yeah. i tend mm. to like stretch out I, I mean i often actually miss lunch to be honest i just have like a brunch right. and then just kind of go right. through till early, early yeah, evening too. um do we actually need protein little and often or is it fine if we're just doing essentially kind of two meals a day i mean obviously we'd need to eat more in yeah. those two meals <clears throat> uh there's a lot of controversy about all of this protein yeah. stuff there's lots of talk about it and there's lots of disagreement about it because there used to be a, a seemingly universal agreement that we can't absorb more than about 30 grams in a sitting so any additional protein to that would be wasted mm -hmm. now that's been completely dismissed and they've done trials with over 100 grams of protein which is vast and pretty inedible for most normal people but to get 100 grams of protein in in one meal was thought to be ridiculous and now is being shown that it is being metabolized at wow. least by some don't people. you love science i just yeah. say as an aside it makes me laugh so much when they go on about scientific facts it's like oh really scientific facts until the next theory comes along and yeah. replaces the previous fact it's like science is evolving and Always. emerging all the time so yeah don't place too much emphasis on what they say is facts and evidence. I think that's such a good point because it is confusing, particularly human nutrition, because there are always so many variables and most yeah. people don't accurate, accurately report what they eat. And so there's all sorts of reasons why the data isn't well, accurate. But cottage cheese has just been mentioned. I've just seen Nikki mention cottage cheese. That's a really good one. 
It's a really good one because you can add it to things without it being necessarily a savory dish and you won't know it's there. It's like ricotta cheese too. A really nice, easy way of getting some protein in. Yeah. Okay, sorry, I interrupted you. Tell me. Um, yeah, the, the science should be asking questions and questioning what we think is gospel and then updating it. So I think we need yeah. to remember what we think is right now might change, but that's okay, that's progress. Yeah, so, absolutely, yeah. Um, yeah. So I certainly think that. we should be spreading it out and... If like the average person who eats three times a day, you and I eat twice a day, but if you're eating three times a day, you really want to be looking at, is my, have I got protein at every meal? But especially first and last meal. But they are the times where your last. body is utilizing the protein the most. But so why, why in the end? I mean, I can imagine that in the morning that we need the protein because it's setting up mm. ourselves for the day. It's setting mm -hmm. up our fullness and mm -hmm. energy and, and c controlling blood sugar. Why, why is it important to have protein at the end of the day? Sleep is where we build most of our muscle. There is most protein yes. synthesis going on while we sleep which is staggering. Nobody talks about that. Yeah. So when we are exercising and being active throughout the day, we are creating a demand for protein synthesis in our muscles so that we at least maintain the muscle we have and ideally create more muscle mass. That's always mm -hmm. a, a good thing to be doing, especially as we're getting older. And that uh, synthesis and creation of new muscle mass is largely going on at night. That's what sleep is about, as well as many other important processes going on right. at night. We are literally um, mending from the stresses that we put our body through during the day. And so we want plenty of amino acids, which is what comes from eating protein. And they are- Okay, so qu quest question for you. If, if we get to the end of the day and we think, oh, blast, I haven't had very much protein, would you have a protein shake before going to bed? Oh, that's a tricky one. <laughs> uh, golly, well. That's an interesting question. Um, I might have a glass, a mug of bone broth. And why that's particularly useful is very, okay. very, very readily and easily digested protein. Your body doesn't have to work hard at getting that protein okay. into the body because it's sort of in the liquid. But also bone broth is very high in a certain amino acid called glycine. And glycine is super, super good if you're not a good sleeper. So that's why something like magnesium glycinate yep. contains glycine is used glycine. as a sleep aid. Yeah. So for people who aren't good sleepers, a bone broth, mug of hot bone broth can be really nice or some bone broth um, powder. Um, and yes, then you are supplying some ready to go um, amino acids okay. for the body to okay. use at night for mending. Okay, I'm, I'm going to get onto that. Let's talk about the amount of protein. Okay, so we've, we've established that it's important to prioritize this at the beginning of the end of the day and then hopefully throughout the day. Mm -hmm. And then we'll go on and talk about maybe some high protein snacks as mm -hmm. well if, if they're needed. Um, I've heard it said that you should have 30 grams minimum of protein on your plate with every meal, mm -hmm. possibly three times a day, mm -hmm. so 30, 30, 30, like 90 mm -hmm. grams. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's right? And where would we get 30 grams from? Because actually, you know, looking at the amount of protein that you have helpfully written it here yes. in the magazine, um, but you know, 30 grams of protein, just to give you an idea, it is three large eggs, okay, with, 30 grams of feta or cottage mm -hmm. cheese or parmesan cheese. It's a lot, I mean, isn't that's it? a lot. That's one yeah. meal. Yeah. That's one it's... third of your daily allowance. An egg averagely has eight grams of protein. That's not a lot. One it's egg. It's not a lot. No. Mm -hmm. I mean, I thought I was doing well. I normally have two eggs a day in the morning, plus, mm. you know, maybe a few others sprinkled out in in whatever. 300 grams of cottage cheese. That is quite a large amount of cottage cheese. Um, 150 grams of mixed nuts. I mean, that's good, but it's a lot. And mm -hmm. I think a lot of people will be worried that, you know, nuts obviously, you know, high in Thank calories, gosh. high in fat, healthy fats. 100 grams of red meat. You know, that's that's probably more doable. You know, yeah. that's like a small... That's not a large steak, portion of red meat. No, most yeah, people would have more grams. like 130 to 150. So white yeah. fish, red meat, those are concentrated proteins. You're going to get about 25 to 30 grams in that just the meat or fish portion. Yeah. 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 So for veggies uh, amongst you guys, I can see Lorraine asking this question. Yeah, of course. You've got, you've got chickpeas. Yep. So chickpeas are, are a good source of protein, but they're incomplete, aren't they? Is it methionine that they lack? Yeah. They're, and leucine particularly. Leucine. Um, lentils, yeah. lentils are pretty good. Um, uh, the most um, useful pulse, 
bean or lentil from a protein point of view among beans and if you and they sprout really really they, easily just them overnight disgusting though oh you don't like <laughs> okay that doesn't help. really yeah. I'm, I'm not going to eat 100 grams of mung beans sprouted or no. not i'm sorry <laughs> there's a good the, the point here being rather than having just one food containing protein and i think this is particularly true for vegans and vegetarians you want to be getting lots of bits of protein from lots of different plant-based foods so you might have some mung beans or chicks sorry there's grumbling going on it's my dog um <laughs> chickpeas or uh, black beans are really nice um uh, a lentil so you might do a mixed bean and lentil salad but you'd add in pumpkin seeds nice source of protein so hemp hemp seed work, isn't it? yeah but you but this is important this if, is important if you are not eating if, any if animal you protein who are, who are plant-based you have, um, and have to work harder at it you have to yeah. work really hard yeah so it's interesting nice. that your, your article here talking about leucine i just picked it up if you don't know about leucine really really important amino acids so basically just to recap so protein is made up of lots of different amino acids mm -hmm. that's why we talk about all these different mm -hmm. they tend to end in end in ene like leucine or methionine or tyrosine mm -hmm. you know those those are the um, amino acids some are essential and some are non-essential is that right yes so, so some you have to get from nine food. essential mm -hmm. nine essential ones that we can't make in the body you have to get them from food guys that's the only way they're found complete proteins are found in animal foods okay they're found in cheese meat dairy fish all the things that we've been talking about incomplete proteins that are missing one or more of those essential amino acids are found in plants mm -hmm. that's why you have to combine them yeah and that's why you need to know about them mm -hmm. so that if you're putting your beans with your rice or whatever you know that you're getting a bit of this doesn't have this particular amino acid, but you can patch it in because you can grab it from here mm -hmm. and eat the two together, yeah, to mm -hmm. make it complete. Yes. Um, and some uh, plant-based proteins have almost um, all of the essential amino acids, and, and a few do have all of them, but they're not in the ideal ratio, so it gets even more complicated. <laughs> have, has a food got all the nine essential amino acids, and then are they in the right ratio? You don't have to think about that if you're having animal protein. It just happens. It's their natural. It's natural. Yeah. And yeah. that's why that's being vegan and vegetarian can take more work and more planning. A lot more work. And I think it's really important, you know, especially for younger people. You know, many of us may have younger, mm. you know, daughters, granddaughters, whatever, um, you know, who start to have restricted diets. Really, really important. Yeah. That if you want to go down that route, you seriously need to know about it because you could be jeopardizing all sorts of health muscle mass bone density you know all the rest an of important it. point about that bone density and again there is some disagreement but it is roughly agreed on that it's around our mid 30s that we stop amassing the bone matrix yeah so we have to build up our bone density so not muscle necessarily we can rebuild muscle much more easily than bone but our, our bone mass is really at its peak in our mid 30s so we have to be sure that we have all our reserves in place by then. There. And then it's easy to, to sort of keep topped up with the bones if we're doing right. the right exercise and having the right diet. But my goodness, it's much harder than muscles. So mm -hmm. yes, it's those, that, those younger generations who may be not having optimal protein levels that could be losing some essential bone mass Sure. way yeah. before they're even thinking about it yeah way before and then it, and then it may be too late because you can't put it into your bones once it's it's, once you've passed you that can piece. it takes a it takes years to to re-mineralize yeah. bones yeah so it's yeah. much much harder than muscle talk to me about some of the plant-based proteins that you can get in powder form mm -hmm. you know i'm seeing a lot of supplements containing things like pea protein and i know there's been issues particularly with pesticide residue contamination. And, you know, that, that is, is certainly a concern um, for some that, that's becoming, you know, more widely known. But what about the quality of the protein itself? Is something like pea protein as effective as, as say, your, your bone broth powder? By the nature of it being a plant protein, it's way, way more processed. And depending on the quality will determine whether it's got those correct levels of uh, essential amino acids so um it's it's a quality thing how, i think hemp, how, how would hemp we know protein. that though because when we pick up a tub of something it just says on it pea protein i mean we don't know where yeah. the peas have come from what the proportion of the amino acids are so i mean how, how, how would we know that hard to know unless you dig into the detail look at the details on the back but you might not even know what you're looking for so as yeah. a general rule i would say if you're going plant-based protein go for protein powders that contains a range of 
plant proteins rather than just one. So I like hemp protein. Okay. It, it's uh, quite a nutritious and quite well balanced protein. So if you get a plant based protein, which has some hemp and some pea and various other ones, that's fine. Peas aren't that bad rice based protein powders you know there is especially no protein in rice so the amount of processing and the amount of rice required to get protein out to be sufficient yeah. um is, is quite complex and uh so soy protein soy isolate um can be a bit easier yeah, there's a lot more protein that. in soy but not everybody can tolerate soy no no exactly it's yeah it's it's so interesting and i have to say if anybody hasn't yet read the article um, that Stephanie's written, I highly, highly recommend it. You'll find it, um, it starts on page, I think, 44 of the magazine. We do have digital copies as well as um, print copies. So print's obviously easy to order if you're in the UK, but if you're overseas, and I know we have a wide audience here, then you can actually download, download a copy. How can people contact you, Stephanie? Because I have a feeling that everyone's gonna want to be picking your brains. Do you do you kind of do private consultations? Oh, excuse me, I've got somebody. Oh, okay. You, you, you answer that question, I'll be back. Yes, I will, I'll answer that question. I'm glad it's not just me worried about the door. Um, I do do private consultations. I have a website which is health-in-hand.co.uk, www. Um, I don't do much. <laughs> yes, I just give a website. Cat food. <laughs> um, I, I am pretty booked up, so uh, okay. there, there is limited availability. I also run health courses at Goodwood. Uh, which, nice. um, we do a gut health and menopause, and now we're just starting a longevity program. Excellent, I need very to be on cool. that one. It's very, very cool. And we've got a fabulous new doctor on board, an Ayurvedic doctor who's uh, looking at all the herbs and things. So, very nice. Excellent. So, so there are and, ways and, and to do. You're on uh, Instagram. Sorry, did, did I miss that? Where, where, where can we find yeah. you on Instagram? Health in Hand uh, UK. Health in Hand. Okay. Health, health in hand, love it. Will you come back and chat with us again? Because I just think this is something, you know, I, I want to return to again and again yes. because it's so important. Yeah. You know, what we eat is one of the few choices that actually we have in life. You know, we don't choose the air quality. We don't choose necessarily the stresses that we're under, where we have to live, you know, our transportation, all of this stuff, all this rubbish that comes into our life. But one of the few things that we have autonomy over is what we put into our mouths, what we put into our shopping trolleys, what we cook, yeah. and um, and that is empowering. And it's important that you know because we have that choice that we we get it right, simply yes. and easily. Nicely put. And we have a choice that every time we eat, we can be healing or harming. And particularly because I specialise in gut health and all those amazing microbes, there are things that heal them and things that harm them. And so we choose mm -hmm. how much of the harm are we going to do and how much of the healing are we going to do, and then they look after us accordingly. So that it is massively empowering. And protein mm -hmm. makes good choices easier because yeah. we have, just very quickly, I know we have to finish, we have a, a, a nutrient sensor in the body. We don't have a calorie sensor in the body. So when, when our bodies are nutritionally satisfied mm. and protein is very good at that we will get a sense of being full and replete for a long period of time you could eat exactly the same amount of calories from fluffy processed food and your body's not fed and not nourished and will be looking for more food and so it's so easy to yeah. overeat or be snacking throughout the day because your body's still requiring nourishment so don't focus on the calories as much as the quality and just yeah. coming back to what levels of protein to have don't worry too much don't you don't need to be measuring and weighing and checking just try and add in those little extra bits of protein to each meal look at the article that i wrote so a bit of feta yeah. cheese some nuts and seeds some pumpkin seeds on top of something as some shavings of parmesan that's a great source of um, protein a tin of um, sardines fabulous you get 23 25 grams of protein from a tin of protein sardines sardine. fabulous Good, good source of calcium too, isn't it? Yeah, With all the, um, yeah lovely. The calcium. Mm -hmm. And good fats. Okay, and good fats. What's not to love about a sardine? And cheap. Excellent. Yeah. And cheap. <laughs> Stephanie, thank you. Very happy new year. Thank you. And uh, thank stay you. strong. I will. Live long and prosper and all that. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you, nice Liz. To lovely see to you. see you again. All right. See you Take again. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.
Uh, excellent. I told you that would be great. And yes, indeed, we will be saving this. So all the Instagram lives that I do here at Liz Our Wellbeing um, get saved and you can find them all. Stephanie, you just need to press the little top oh. right hand. That's the one, I think. And then maybe, you can, or maybe you've, you've gone blurry. I think you might still be connected. So don't say anything that you don't want to say and broadcast to the nation. You might just need to check that you are clicked off. Um, as I said, this is actually something that I really like. I use strong nutrients. Um, this is their unsweetened vanilla protein shake. So they do a flavoured version. They do a really nice chocolate one, actually, that I give my kids, which I mix with banana and yoghurt, and they really, really like that. Um, but this is the one that I personally use. It's unsweetened vanilla. I just have a scoop of this. This is casein protein. So it's an animal-based casein protein, which is slower release than the whey protein. Whey protein is cheaper, um, it's more widely available. I think the casein, I digest it better. I find it easier uh, on the tummy, on the gut. And yeah, I, I like it. Uh, it says here, it's highly absorbed, a low glycemic index, um, helping you feel fuller for longer while supporting sustainable energy as well as lean muscle and fat loss naturally high in calcium as well. So yeah, that's what I buy. Um, you get 12% off with Liz Loves. We'll make sure that we put the links up on the website. I also add creatine. If we're talking about muscle, I add a teaspoon of creatine powder. There was a post, I think, earlier um, this week on Instagram. This is mine here. Uh, one teaspoon goes into my tea or coffee every day. So that's like between three and five grams, tasteless helping to produce more energy. It's part of the ATP energy cycle. And it's also really good for just toning and smoothing and firming up, which is what we need to do as we age. A couple of other things before I go. Energy, anybody feeling a bit sluggish? This little tin of goodness. This is Calm Assist. Really, really good. So this has got magnesium citrate, green tea. Uh, it's got uh, acerola cherry, go to cola extract. It's just a genius formulation. Bit of maca as well. Maca, very good for midlife women. It's been linked to libido, but that's not necessarily my, you might want to take it. You might want to take it just generally as a pick me up, as a tonic. So if you're looking for a new year tonic, then Calm Assist. Again, there's a Liz Loves on that. And last but not least, I'm going to give a big shout out to my lovely friend, Anthea, Anthea Turner, who was here not long ago with me, actually just before Christmas. This is her Balm 3. We talked last time she was with me about her Balm 6, which is the Wonder Balm for the face that does everything. It cleanses, it moisturizes, it smooths, it soothes. You can use it for lips and hair and nails and so much stuff. This is her body. It smells great. It's lovely lemongrass. Wish you could smell it, but it has that lovely sort of whipped texture. And again, you can do so much with this. You can use it as a balm. You can use it as a hand cream. You can put dollops of it in the bath or in the shower. It's so emollient. And Anthea, we love it. I know the community that we share loves it too. And thank you for giving us a Liz Loves discount on it. So super happy with that. We will put the link up, obviously, on LizOurWellbeing.com. That is it for today. Don't forget that tomorrow, Friday, if you're watching this in real time, is of course a high day always for Liz Our Wellbeing. Two reasons. Number one is that you get the free newsletter. It comes out tea time every Friday, four o'clock. Amy, my head of digital, she hits send. If you are on the list, you will receive it. Check your spam folder, make sure that you get it and open it and enjoy it for the weekend. It has so much content, recipes, podcast links, competitions, special offers, new features to read, exclusive content. You will get that free of charge in the newsletter. We don't sell your data. We don't spam you. It's purely a free resource for this lovely community here. Second thing is it's the day that we get a new podcast episode that goes live. So brand new episode comes out tomorrow. So take a listen to that. Let me know what you think. You can always leave me a comment either here on this particular Instagram or over on mine, which is Liz Me. That is it for today. I wish you all a very happy, joyful rest of the day, end of the week, perfect weekend. I look forward to seeing you back again live next Tuesday. Until then, stay very well. Bye-bye.